everyone. Um, this is Jeanette Bailiff. She is a um, strategy and life coach. I'm a life coach, you? success coach, and speaker. And mm -hmm. I always like to do interactive sessions. So since we're such an intimate group, you know, speak up, ask questions. I gave you a very interactive handout, as you can see, because I'm not in advance telling you what these five traps are. And we will, I promise, go through what the solutions are. So if everybody has a pen or a um, excellent memory, we will get started. So who wants more success in anything? Well, we're going to talk about that. You define success. Because in my coaching, I work with people on how they get to define their own success. One of the problems is we can fall, actually, into a trap of being in somebody else's success mode. So before I start giving away the five traps and the solutions, why do I, Jeanette Eliff, know about five traps? I am a certified life coach, success coach, and speaker. And before that, I was a, a nurse, a leader in healthcare organizations. And one of my big expertises was that of a health educator and a stress management educator. So even in my beginning years of my career in nursing, health education, wellness management, and stress management, I started to realize through many years of hundreds, if not thousands of people that I have talked with, that they can fall into traps that keep them from being as successful as they want to be. Successful in their business, successful in their career, successful in their life. Then I decided to jump the corporate healthcare ship about six years ago and start my own business in coaching. I had become a certified coach and hung out my shingle, and I quickly learned that I probably fell into every one of these five traps. Now I'm much more successful because I have figured out, using a variety of reasons, how I got out of these traps. So today, through my expertise and experience, I'm going to share with you the most common five traps that people will fall into and how to get out of them. Your handout is interactive. We have a couple other things to do. When you leave, make sure you pick up a couple little gifts like your star squeezy ball and your tiny little notebook. Um, I said we're interactive. We can go up to 1 o'clock. We'll have time for an assignment and time to ask questions. So what is the first trap? Just getting right to everything. And with my handy-dandy PowerPoint up here, the first trap is, just like you asked, not having a definition or a vision of success. And you can interchange the word success with goals, vision, business plan, but we get so busy in our lives. We don't stop to take t time. What is it that I really want my life to look like? Or even in our business. I'm embarrassed to admit, I probably jumped my corporate healthcare job too soon because I was all excited about starting my coaching business and I went into it without a really cool plan. I had a little plan, but not as big of a plan or of a successful plan as I have now. Women especially get caught in the trap of living their whole lives nonstop. You know, I go to school, I graduate from school, I get married, I have kids, I'm just doing all these things, and suddenly they wake up and say, and men too will do this, where am I going? Do I want to start a new business? Do I want to do a career? What do I want to do with my life? So not having a good definition of what success means to you and as I said before, maybe falling in the trap of living somebody else's definition of success. Even starting a business and you're using a business model that doesn't, isn't working for you for whatever reason. How do you get out of this trap? It sounds easy, but we don't do it. You take the time to figure out what you want. So schedule time a half a day, all day, one hour, sometimes even 15 minutes. But on purpose, schedule time to answer the question, what does success look like for me? 
What is my true vision of my business, my career, and my life? And you can ask yourself questions as you write even a little vision story. What does my ideal day look like? How much money am I making? And how do I make it? And be specific. Because nobody's going to see this except you, unless you want to share it with people. We're going to talk about that a little bit, too. Who do I spend most of my time with? Who do I surround myself by? What do I do for fun? And at night, what are my final thoughts before I go to sleep? And for most of us, it's, oh, I want to have a great day, or my day was great. You had a question? I was going to say, well, first of all, the comment, having a great day is not detailed enough. We all want that. Um, but yeah, so, so my question is, are there, are there tools or things that can, you can use to help you define them? I mean, you did just gave some good questions, mm -hmm. but I'll speak. All I'm going to do is, is talk to you about the fact that you and I should probably have like personal coaching sessions. I'll be careful. Um, but, I, I'm sure I'm not the only person. What I find is that I've, I'm 50 now. I, I have, as you've said, rushed through life, I've worked hard, I've always had at least four things going on at once, right? Um, and, and I have, by many definitions, succeeded. And yet I'm not, I still find, even at this age, that I'm wondering, like, is this really what I wanted to be doing right now? Mm -hmm. and, and what do I really want to do? And, and what, when people ask me, well, what, what would you like to do? What I find is I'm so tired now that really all I want is to go away and do nothing for a period of time, which most of us don't have the luxury of doing. So um, I feel like to, to answer the questions that you just asked, I need something to facilitate that because, because if, you, if I'm really honest, I want to do nothing right now. Correct. So I know I don't want to do what I'm doing now. I want to do something different but I don't have the energy to mm -hmm. even contemplate that. Mm -hmm. So are there, are there workshops or tools or things that you would recommend? To well, there's lots of workshops out there. And actually, as I go through the rest of the traps, your, your question will probably be answered. But it is making the decision that I want to stop the madness, or I know that I want to be doing something different, or I know that I just need something different than what I have going on right now. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are workshops that many coaches or other strategists will put on about, and sometimes they're entitled, How to Find Your Passion, mm -hmm. How to Take the Time to Figure Out What You Really Want. You can do this on your own by the simple exercise of sitting down and answering some of those questions, but sometimes working with a coach or a mentor privately to pull out what are you really passionate about. Another great exercise is to think of a time in your life, and this is an exercise I use with some of my clients. Think of a time in your life when you were really excited about an achievement I don't care how far back you have sure. to go, from, from kindergarten to high school to college to just last week. But really get in touch with the feelings that you had about that achievement. Some people will tell me it was the day that I wrote a little article in my college, for my college journalism class, and somebody picked it up and published it in their magazine and I got paid $100 for it. Now this might have been 15 years ago, but they still remembered that as being the most exciting time of their life. Then what you start to ask yourself is, what was so exciting about that? What, what passion did I have that rose in me that got me so excited when that happened? Sure. And then you start to look at, what can I do now to recreate that excitement about that article or writing or whatever it was, right. or being accepted or having my first child or whatever it was. Right. And yes, you can go to like you can go to three-day retreats that will really take you through the process of doing something like that. Okay. And then a related question: If you come up with this, you, know, you answer the questions, and 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 they're not compatible, right? At the end of the day, I. Will Mm -hmm. right, right, but the path, there are certain paths that are harder 
I'm going to fail to give a good example, but my question is, what if you find that the things you lay out are not compatible? Right? Or not reasonable in I in think ev you can create everything and everything is compatible. And I only have till 1 o'clock. No, 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 no. They're great questions. But we could spend a lot of time on that in itself. And by that I mean when you write your big vision story for your life, I want to be taking walks in the park. I want to be uh, taking photographs. And I want to make a million dollars a year. They all will intertwine somehow. So you start to think, how do I make that happen? You might not be making a million dollars taking the walks or taking photographs, but there's no reason why you still can't have that in your so life. Don't filter it up front, lay out your design. Yes. And worry about don't it. ask, don't get caught up with the how. Okay. That's a, also another trap we fall into. Right now, don't get caught up in the how. So what's the first trap? The first trap is that you do not. Success have a definition of success. You haven't taken the time to really get in touch with what is success? And I use the word success because I think that word is overused or underused. Most people think, oh, success is being like those million, you know, billionaires now. Not necessarily. Success is what you want. Happiness, freedom, flexibility. And having money is not a bad thing. Having money is good. Money is, is energy. And the more money we have, the more happy we are with ourselves, the more service we can be to the world, and the more service we can be to ourselves. So money is a good thing. So right now, don't get all worried about the how. And we're probably not going to get to the how today, because today is limited time. But I'm always available afterwards to answer questions or set up a complimentary session with me in the future, and we can start to figure out a how. So get clear about your success, and don't worry about the how right now. Because what's going to drive your actions and your eyes to get open to opportunities are you being so clear about what your hot button is, what your passion is, what energizes and excites you and will have you jumping up in the morning. That's what's going to make your life easier. That's what's going to make it easy then to say no to all those things getting in the way. So defining your success and taking the time to do that and not getting worried about the how. Now the second trap is letting overwhelm get in your way. So it's getting all caught up with overwhelm, like the how. How am I going to do this? Or you have a plan. You have a plan and you have all these actions and you don't know where to begin. So what did I say about overwhelm? As I'm, So you're excited about achieving your goals. You don't know where to begin or the end of the day comes and you're not feeling successful about what you've got. And you get stuck, and you get frustrated, and you have low energy, and you go back to your bad habits because you're overwhelmed. And at the end of the day, nothing got it. So what do you do? With, well, with overwhelm, you, you, first of all, you don't beat yourself up that I fell into this overwhelm trap. But the biggest solution to this trap is, number one, prioritizing. So after you come up with your vision, and you come up with actions to achieve your vision. You may have, you may have brainstormed a hundred different actions, where do I begin? So one way is circling the top three actions and beginning today on the most important action. And let your list stay over there because those list of actions are still going to say, stay there. The other way you prioritize is when you wake up in the morning and you see, oh my gosh, I've got all this to do, where do I start? I ask myself this every day in my planning process. What is the most important thing I need to get finished today that will have the worst consequences if I don't get it finished? I, used to, I started to use this when I was in my corporate healthcare job quite a bit because what would usually happen at the end of my day when I was in corporate healthcare? You carried your list forward the next day. 
Yes, or I would stay late at work because I had an important project that I didn't get to during the day because I kept putting it off. I kept, I fell in the trap that everybody else does of doing all these little things first because I got, I got more stuff on my list done and it made me feel good. But then I was taking work home with me. Then I was turning in work to my boss in the hospital I worked with that I wasn't always proud of because I was rushing through it. Even in my business today, I wake up and say, what's the most important thing I'm going to do today that's going to help me reach that big money goal instead of getting caught up on Facebook, instead of cleaning off my desk, instead of doing these things? So that's one big question. The second big question to ask yourself to beat the overwhelm is to ask, what will I do immediately that's going to propel my business forward? What am I going to do immediately that's going to propel my business forward? So if you're working on your goals during the day, and you're not working on things to market your business, to promote your business, then you're not going to make that million dollar mark, that hundred thousand dollar mark, the fifty thousand dollar mark, whatever it is for you. So whenever you go to do an activity, ask yourself, this is another way to look at it, if I do this, is this taking me closer to my goals that I figured out what my definition of success is? Another big statement that all my clients love is say yes more fully and no more frequently. Say yes more fully to what you want here, which means you say no more frequently. And it means saying no to even the good things. Wow, I'm really honored that you asked me to like be the president of this big group in Frederick. But I'm saying no right now because that will get in the way of my time management and of all these other things that I want to do to reach this and to avoid this. Another thing that we do when clients work with me is we'll do a time analysis because they're saying yes to everything. And then they're coming to me saying, I just can't get clients. I go to all these networking meetings and I can't get clients. Well, when do you ever do follow-up? Because all you're doing is attending networking meetings. And I call them on that and they don't like it. So then you start to prioritize and you say yes to those activities that are really going to propel you forward and start to say no to some other things. So even make yourself a worksheet, and here's a good assignment for you. Like this week, start to think about what am I going to say no to? Because I'm saying yes to success and no to everything else. And sometimes it's also no to a mindset. We're going to talk about that, I think, next. No to a mindset that drags you down also. So what is the third trap? Oh, limiting beliefs and mindsets. I could spend three days talking about this. Everything we want to achieve in our life begins with a belief that we can do this, that we can create this. And beliefs and habits and thoughts all originate from our upbringing, our cultures, our education, and we might have these beliefs inside of us that rule our lives that we don't even know about. I mean, I grew up with the belief in, in my era, women are not very good at math. So they should not really be doing jobs where math is involved. I, I, I work with clients that have these beliefs that they don't even know that they have until we start working together. They have a belief of, I don't want to be a pushy sales lady. I remember going to the store and my mother and I would be hounded by these sales ladies. And then this particular client would ask me, I have a business and why can't I get any clients? And when we would talk about her marketing, she hated getting on the phone with people. She hated call, like cold calling or even warm calling because it brought up memories of pushy sales lady. So what we did, and this is a good example, so we figured out she had this belief, I don't want to be a pushy sales lady, so I don't want to promote myself. I don't want to brag my, about myself. 
that's not right. Uh, you know, ladies don't do that. Boy, I was brought up like that. Ladies don't do that. And only children are supposed to sit there and be good and not talk. That was my belief. I got over that one quickly. So here's a great example of getting a more positive belief. So she had this belief, I don't want to brag about my, my business. She had a business of really beautiful clothes from her house. And I'm, I'm bad. I'm a pushy sales lady. So we turned that belief around into, instead of, I believe I'm pushy when I make these sales calls, into, I love telling people about my beautiful clothes. I love telling people how much fun it is to wear my beautiful clothes. And she said, oh, I never thought of that. So what we did, and I call these vitality cards, and they're kind of like affirmations, and I gave you each one. You can work on one uh, today if you want. So she wrote on her card, I love telling people about my beautiful clothes. I'm energized when I talk to people about my beautiful clothes. I have fun when I tell people the fun they're going to have with my beautiful clothes. And her assignment was to read her new belief affirmation in the morning and in the evening and also tape it up by her phone because then when she had her scheduled time to make her phone calls, she was reminded how much fun and energy she had telling people about her beautiful clothes. When we did a follow-up, she already had 10 new clients like three weeks later, because her mind frame changed. So the thing with beliefs is don't beat yourself up when you say, oh, wow, I, I didn't realize I was living with this. Every day I think of some other little message that I, that I hear. And beliefs can show up as those negative inner voices. I, I call them the inner zombie. And I even coined this phrase before I started walking uh, started walking, started watching Walking Dead or even before I met Kimba. But what do you think of when you think of a zombie? Just dead, d dead not okay. lively, decayed, ugly. You know, the, the old zombies used to only come out at night, right? And they're like dragging along and they want to drag you along. They want you to join their club and they want to keep you small. So when you start to do things, to be successful, you start hearing more voices. You can never do that. You're a pushy sales lady. You're not smart enough to leave your job. You're supposed to work until retirement, even though retirement plans stink right now. And if you don't watch it, you fall into that zombie trap of listening to those voices. So the way you stop listening is, first of all, you never use judgment on yourself. And you say, wow, I've been following the zombies. I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm not in touch with what I want to do. Because as you become more successful, they get louder until you control them. So you tell your zombie, stop talking to me. It really is that easy, Glenn. You really do say, stop talking. Oh, then you, you have a partner, and they do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look at that. Actually, was my assumption that you were not talking about inner voices. I'm talking. It, well, oh, I'm talking. Okay. Well, I am talking inner voices. I am talking about those that inner negative self talk. But what do you do? That's a great question. What do you do about actual people? The one rule is we really want to surround ourselves with fabulous supporting people. And sometimes we can't. Right. So. Already, it sounds like you already have a partner. Right. Yeah, right. I have a partner. Yeah. And so he doesn't feel like me like that. So mm -hmm. he's definitely a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why is he your partner? Um, it just fell into my, my husband. We fell into it. So he's a realtor too. Mm -hmm. But. Guess what? These people are really successful who are doing this. So 
So what do you do with people like that? So using that as an example, and I'm sorry, I forgot Anne your Anne Marie. Anne Marie, mm -hmm. what is stopping you from going out and doing the neighborhood walks? Mm, well, that's a whole other story. I don't want to go do that, but he's not going to go do it. He's oh. like, I need to sit on his butt, I'm going to go out and walk. Oh. So, yeah, that's a whole dynamic we have. But, but, um, so, but he's always like, oh, no, you know, they should come to us, the clients. Mm -hmm. We should have to knock on their doors, or we should right. have to do that. There's all these little rules and, and wonderful strategies I can share with you that, yes, we want to surround ourselves with positive, upbeat people. The most important thing is for you within to be positive and upbeat and for you to go what do what you think is right, for you to have positive thoughts and not be dependent on another person's thoughts. And maybe it's time for what I call a clear, a really clarifying conversation right, with him. Some people don't like sales. Right. right. So sometimes it's time, maybe in a partnership, to have a real clarifying conversation about what is working and what's not working. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's good. also about not letting you get dragged down by somebody else. Mm -hmm. There's that little saying by Wayne Dyer, what everybody else thinks of you is none of your business. Now, I know that's difficult when you're in partnership, and especially it's your husband. Mm -hmm. But I can share a story with you that my partner in life, and I can say, thank goodness, we don't do business together. But in a way, we do, because we do run a, non a little nonprofit together. And he has his opinion of things, and I have my opinion of things. And I don't try to change him. And I do my thing. And I ask him questions, but I don't try to force him to change. Mm -hmm. And what I find is slowly, while I'm like doing my thing, I kind of notice he is changing when I wasn't paying attention. Now, in a partnership like that, the dynamic is a little different, but I think it's important for you to focus on what you want to be doing. And... When the time comes, he well, may change or may not change. change. Yes, yeah. Or both of you talk about in this clarifying conversation, you know, what are my strengths and what am I going to do, and what are his strengths and what is he going to do? Yeah. That could be a whole other conversation whole there. Other yes, but it is, it is true. Oh, yes, it is true that what if I'm surrounded by real-life people that are that are reminding me of I'm not good enough or my idea is stupid or this will never work because when I hear that, it reminds me of my father sometimes. So sometimes these voices we hear are voices from the past that they were doing the best they could. And this is not about you know, getting down on our education system, getting down on our parents, getting down on whatever. It's having a aha moment like, that's why I'm like this. Okay. And you can choose, like maybe with some assistance, to delve deeper into why you can't change that. Or you can say, I'm going to change it. And one of the ways you change it, because this really works, because we can program our deep subconscious mind to start believing new things with our conscious mind by writing out what we want and reading it over and over. That's one of the tools. Get a vision of what you want and every day read it. I have some new goals and new visions. I'm reading them in the morning along with some inspiring reading and I'm reading them at night. And I can tell you in the last week that I have started doing this again routinely in my life, I have two new clients. I have some other new things happening in my life. I feel better and life is good. Now, it doesn't mean that some challenge is not going to come up, but I'm going to be on top of it and conquer it a little sooner. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it might, you know, depending on your perspective on things, that might seem kind of hokey to you know, write the stuff down and post it, or you might, you know, more, more beliefs, right? Ooh, I'll be labeled mm -hmm. one of those weird old new agey people or right. something. But I, I can say that I watched my father do that um, and really saw a transformation on the bathroom. Yes. Because he would read them every morning and every night. Yeah. And, and yes. I, it, it, it yes. 
And even years and years ago, when they even do it now, when especially in, in life insurance, maybe they do it in real estate. We do. I actually have a friend who um, is a realtor in Montgomery County, and she was selling $30,000 a year worth of real estate, and then she got a realtor coach, and she said When you and she started with the affirmations. That was what the business yes. was the changing point. And if you talk to anybody that you would think is successful, again, define success, like the people bringing in the big bucks and look like they have it all, and if you read any books about them, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. They know what their success is. They put actions in place. They have some form of affirmations or goal. And what I started to say before, even in, 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 in years gone by, when somebody got a new sales position, what would they do? They'd cut out a picture of a red sports car, and they'd put that red sports car on their, on their bulletin board. And every day when they were making phone calls, that's my goal, to make enough money to get that red sports car. Now, maybe they weren't thinking they were doing the woo-woo thing of writing affirmations, but they had a picture, and you can do that too. You know, I mean, I work with people, we do vision stories, we do vision boards. I say, get one picture that represents what you want and stick it on the board and look at it every day. When um, my partner that I have now, years ago, started in life insurance business, he didn't like it, but what they would do, and it's a strategy with the new guys that were coming in, is they'd immediately say, you should go out and buy a new car. Lease a new car, because that will give you incentive to pay for it. You know, and for most of the people, it worked. That, because we have a lot of old cars, my husband likes old cars, and for five years we've had the same Jeep. And then I finally said, I said, you know what, I need a new car. So I went and bought this new little red Mini. And I'm telling you, that has made me be like, oh my God, I love this car. I need to pay for it. I love it. I need to pay for yes, it. Yes, I want to pay it. for it. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. amazing. Yes. It. And it was those kind of, you can call them little mind incentive tricks, but right. it's the same thing that we're talking about. It's how, this is my goal. Uh, this is how I define success. Now, maybe success to you isn't a little red sports car or a big house. We don't care. It's your definition of success. Do not fall in the trap of what we do because that's another belief. I believe I'm successful only when I'm making $100,000 or only if I'm making a million dollars. Success to you might be something totally different and that's really cool because I want you to embrace what you want and that's how you make it easy. Otherwise, you're suffering trying to live somebody else's life. How many people do I talk to that now they're, you know, 40s, 50s, maybe older, and they went to school to do something, like to be a doctor? I'll use that as an example because that's a good example because my parents wanted me to, and they hated every minute of it. Maybe they were a good doctor. Maybe they made a lot of money, but as soon as they could, they weren't doctoring anymore. And I used to work with a cardiologist who was really well-known, and I was sitting next to him one day in the critical care unit. He was telling me about this, his son. And I said, oh, is your son going to be a doctor? I couldn't even finish the sentence. He goes, no way. I want my, I want my son to be a conductor in a, in a great orchestra. And I thought, first of all, I thought that was interesting. But what is he doing? He's starting to label his son as going to be, my, no son of mine is going to be a doctor. So all about belief. So wh what do you think trap number four is? I forgot. What is it? Uh, oh, now this is a good one. This is actually my favorite one. You are not practicing what I call great self-care. Great self-care. And what is self-care? What do you think I mean by self-care? Taking care of yourself, getting rest, looking out for your happiness. And, and if you get so busy taking care of everyone else, you're not taking care of yourself. Right? Yes. And great self-care is what I call anything that rises your energy level. 
you know, our feelings and our activities are all vibrations of energy. And that's proven in quantum physics. It's not a woo-woo thing. It's really proven. It is. That even that computer has vibrations going on. And when we want to create, we want our vibrations and our feelings to be high energy. And when we're not feeling well or we're blaming other circumstances or we're just feeling lazy, that's low energy. Or we've been working at our desk too long trying to make success happen, and, and you, you might be excited, but oh my gosh, I'm kind of tired of doing this and I can't be creative anymore. So it's things like great self-care are, are things like taking a walk, sometimes even taking a, a deep breath, a couple of deep breaths and drinking a glass of water just to change your perspective. It's scheduling time to do what you think is fun and adventurous. It's getting away from your work. It's being surrounded by great people. It can be, you know, getting your nails done, going to the spa, getting a massage, getting some great food, having a glass of wine, as long as you don't have too much, but, you know. Yeah, the, a, a trap that I found that I fell into years ago, and it actually, it, it, it makes the, the great self-care point an interesting one for me, is uh, when I was younger, I would take more time, I would carve out more time to go do things other than work or whatever. But then what I would find is, and this is, I guess, maybe tied into beliefs, I am, I am so highly motivated around productivity and accomplishment that I would be miserable. So I would take the time for the glass of wine or the movie or the whatever, but then at the end of the day, it's like it wasn't worth it because I'm behind on these things and I'm not achieving what I need to get done. And now, so I was happy for an hour, but overall I'm unhappy. So I moved more into just a work, work, work mode because the sense of accomplishment is... is a big good, driver for you. It's a big driver, mm -hmm. a huge mm -hmm. driver for me. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I'm keenly aware of the fact that in many ways that's not good self-care. I do feel better by being, by accomplishing mm -hmm. But I don't sleep properly. I don't eat properly. I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's there's there's like a there's like there's like things that are they're tugging on and, and causing some interesting behaviors mm -hmm. between the four that you've uncovered. So and great self care is really individualized for everybody. Yes. Once again, it's doing what everybody else says you're supposed to be doing. You can read many books out there about self care personal growth and development, but you have to find what works for you. Self-care can come in when suddenly you find, I'm not feeling creative, or, or, or I've got all this great stuff going on, but something is still missing. Maybe I'm not sleeping, sleeping well at night, and yes, I wake up and I'm really productive, but I'm still not sleeping at night. So that's when you can start exploring what can I do differently? And for some people, every, everybody's different. For some people, it might be a 15-minute break. It might be, I'm going outside and walking around the block a couple of times or one time or maybe down to the library and back just to get some fresh air to energize me. You know, we have, they, they used to label us having different times of per, types of personalities, type A and type B. And they've gone, gone even deeper. And, you know, me being the old cardiac stress management nurse, oh, it's not good to be type A. You need. But then they did more studies that found the high type A people that liked being that way and that were productive were better off being that way. And it was okay to be type A if that was your choice and you were empowered and in control of it. When it's not your choice and it's dragging you down, then that's different. So great self-care is a good thing to think about, but again, do it your way. And there's, I could you know, cover hundreds of ways that you can do that. And what do you think that number five is? This is probably my best one also. Having a lack of support. Everybody wants success, and that's why we're talking about these five most common traps that you can fall into. And lack of support can be a variety of things. That maybe you're surrounded by people that are, you know, Debbie or Danny Downers. So what do you do about that? Maybe you can't totally eliminate those people from your life, 
but you start to surround yourself with people that are upbeat and positive. And the other people will somehow sort themselves out, take care of themselves, and you will feel better. The other thing I mean by lack of support is you're just trying to do everything yourself. You're, you've got your success, you've got all your, your actions you want to do, and, and you're in overwhelm. And this has been happening to me. So I now have a couple of assistants that help me. I have a writer assistant. assistant. I have what I call, I've had him for years, my web, web guy assistant that's going to start doing some more things for me. For a while I had a housekeeper. I have somebody that comes and cuts my grass, just giving you some examples, because I just don't have time to do it all. So think about where else can I get support. There's three questions to ask yourself when you have a task to be done. Or there's three things, I should say, that you can do with something when it's faced. This thing needs to be done. You can either do it yourself, you can delegate it or hire it out for somebody to do. Or number three, Delay. don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it might be something that really doesn't need to be done or at that time. Mm -hmm. So do it yourself, get somebody else to do it one way or another, or just don't do it. And the other thing I mean by lack of support is maybe not surrounding yourself by, by a mentor or a coach, and this is not a sales pitch for a coach, but there's a lot of positive actions that can come from having a mentor or a coach who's your, your cheerleader, you get great objective actions, they hold you accountable, and maybe you can find a friend that does that for you. Or an accountability group. Or accountability group. Heather Stang does the mastermind mm -hmm. accountability group. Yes, or even an accountability partner. <clears throat> I, when I do a certain coaching group, everybody gets assigned an accountability partner. I'm taking a big business building, uh, business school right now, and I have an accountability partner. She actually lives in Canada, but every day we made the commitment to get on the phone for five minutes a day. And all we say is, this is what I'm getting done, this is how you can support me. And if we can't do it on the phone, we do it by email. And find an accountability partner that will support you. So always ask. Start your own support group, your own mastermind or accountability group. And more and more that's becoming uh, popular. Similar to, you know, like a book club. Let's get together to talk about a book. Let's get together to talk about our projects and how we can support us. You read a lot of great stories of the people that are really successful that started out with mentors. And maybe they went and interviewed five different people that they th thought were really successful for them and got the best tips and they were able to find a mentor through that also. So the thing to do now is, I've given you a lot of information, don't fall into overwhelm, but think about the five traps and maybe pick the one that you want to either avoid or get out of. I'm going to climb out of this trap. And then write down some action items. How am I going to do this? Jeanette threw out some suggestions. Maybe I have some more suggestions of myself. Take time to do that. And pick three actions and prioritize and begin immediately to either avoid or to get out of the five traps. Because in the beginning, we all said you wanted success. And you do have the power to create success. And you do have the power to get out of the traps. Use your, I call these vitality cards, and you all have a little prize on your card. Use your card to write out some affirmations or even goals, if you don't like that word affirmations, goals. But write it as if you already have it. Because I really believe that we can attract things to us but you have to have your eyes open for the opportunities.